So hi, Claire. Thanks for joining me today to have a bit of a chat about you know, your experience as a TO. And um, obviously, I think it'll be really interesting for people to hear you know, your, um, your background experience um, in the sport. Cool. Uh, well, nice to, nice to talk to you, Michael, yet again. Um, yes. Yeah. It's been a um, while since, yeah. I think, yeah, since <laughs> Devonport. Um, yes, since Devonport. <laughs> yes. So I, I suppose, firstly, for those people who don't, may not know, where, um, you know, where do you live? Um, have you always lived there? And how did you first sort of get involved in the sport of triathlon? Cool. Okay. Well, yeah. So I, um, I'm Claire Hannon and I'm um, from Wellington, New Zealand. Um, and I uh, started out in triathlon way back now, um, maybe 15 years ago, yep. when I was um, cajoled into doing my first triathlon. There was a women's <laughs> series that was on, and one of my sisters um, said, come on, you know, let's have a go at this. So I got into um, doing my very first triathlon, and um, I loved it so much that yeah. uh, I did another and another, and then I joined the Wellington Triathlon Club. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What you, what you enjoy about it in those early days? What was it about the sport that... I liked, I liked the fact that I was um, challenged by doing something that I hadn't done for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I liked the fact that it was um, a whole bunch of other ladies who weren't that fit either at the time. Yeah. So um, it, there was a lot of um, camaraderie around doing the sport. Um, and everybody was so friendly. Um, okay. You know, you could ask them all sorts of questions and everybody would help you out and... Um, very giving of their time and their thoughts and and encouraging yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so obviously you started you know, as an athlete we'll call, we'll, yeah. we'll call you an athlete Thank um you. for the purposes yeah sounds nice doesn't it um not just somebody goes around um and then obviously you, you came at some point there became a technical official how did that sort of transpire that you became an official yeah, so what happened is the uh, the club was um, sending around uh, a newsletter and they had said that there was a technical officials course on, on a particular date. And, um, you know, anybody interested in doing that, you know, could um, could come along. So um, I thought about it and I thought, oh, I don't know what that's all about. Let me go and have a, have a, have a see. So... Um, I'm still, I still actually am an athlete, by the way, Michael. Okay, yes. <laughs> yes, I know. But, we, won't, but, we won't talk about your mountain biking expertise on this call, but yes. Uh, yes, uh, but um, I decided, yeah, I'll go along and find out about that. And I did the course and um, it was really interesting. And I was very fortunate enough to have someone teaching the course who was so experienced and uh, uh, she was um, – someone that turned out to be very influential in my life okay. um, and uh, is still involved in triathlon to this day. So, okay. Yeah. So you so say that early influence obviously helped guide you in terms of the path you've gone on with your officiating? Yes, yes. She uh, she made it very clear um, the purpose of what why we'd be um, technical officials and what we were to do. And um, yeah, she um, she was very good at um, explaining what was involved and um, how you interact with athletes and how you can help the whole process of a, an event go on, um, okay. which was fantastic and really enjoyed it. And so I thought, oh yeah, I'm gonna might stick with this. And then, you know, did my first um, first course, did the uh, exam did the shadowing of the, you know, in New Zealand we shadow on our yeah. first um, on, the, on the field of play, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then um, just signed up and thought, oh, yeah, and I met all these nice people that... Uh, More nice that people. Doing the, yes, that were doing the same thing. And, uh, and some of them are my very good friends to this day. So Okay. So, yeah, no, it's, it's sort of fascinating how people often sort of come into the sport and different times have different experiences yes. um, in terms of, you know, some negative, some positive, but obviously in your, your case, it's obviously a positive experience. Um, you, you talked in terms of obviously someone helped you through those early days. How did they sort of encourage you to develop further as an official? What was it that, you know, because you could have just been an official in New Zealand and going to local races. What was it just, you know, what was it either they did or you did to make it, to take it further? 
I think that will, uh, they were a very good role model and they would answer any questions or queries that we had. It turned out that that particular person uh, ended up being the uh, the technical manager for Triathlon New Zealand. Mm -hmm. So uh, she was able to, um, you know, say, hey, look, I noticed you, oh, you did a really good call there on what you did. And so she noticed that I had done some good um good things on the field of play yep. um, and so she encouraged me to step up and say you know ask for different roles so that I could do the gam whole gambit of, of roles that we have the full mm -hmm. um, different uh, roles that there are which enabled me to to have a bit more faith in what I was doing and and to get more knowledge on how to do it all mm -hmm. um, and she made sure that I was teamed up with uh, more experienced officials so that I learned off them. Um, and then, then, you know, just showed me the path, the way of what you could do going okay. forward. Yeah. So in those early days, obviously, yeah, you had a lot of, it sounds like you had a lot of support from the officials certainly around you. Um, have you, you know, have you found that right throughout your career that there is that support for, for yourself and other yeah. officials? Yeah, there are. Yeah, yeah. I've I've been very fortunate, but I've also made sure that I've learned off others. Um, mm -hmm. So I would I will go out of my way to make sure that I get information off them from their experiences. So make sure that you um, get as uh, go up and make conversations with complete strangers at yep. the time, um, but but have those conversations and then they they give back to you just as much as you give to them, so to speak. So I found yeah. that throughout triathlon as well. Yeah. Yeah. So over that time, obviously there's been you know a few great times, a few exciting times, but also I suppose there's been some challenges for you there. Is there some particular challenge you you know you faced? in the sport and and how did you sort of you know manage through that process at the time um i've had yes yeah, some some challenges on the way um i've had a particularly very challenging moment at, at one um event uh that resulted in um an athlete um uh, having to be extracted from the water and taken to hospital um and it's not you, you train for these situations and um, you're told the process of what you are to do. It's not until you actually have that happen and those sorts of things happen anytime they want to, those yep. sorts of things, and you have to be able to react, and but without panicking. So you have to think clearly and think back, right, what am I supposed to do in this situation? I need to do this call. Who do I need to inform? Um, what's the process? What do I need to do here? I need to keep, um, you know, people away from this area, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's um, thinking back to how, how, how do I manage this? Yeah. Um, I mean, it yeah. sounds like a lot of things were happening, certainly at the time there. Yes. Um, how did you sort of manage to sort of stay, well, it sounds like you stayed calm. I'm sure it's a bit like a duck, you know, the, the feet of paddling yeah. madly under the water. But, you know, what was it that, you know, brought you to that point? Because it didn't always happen in your first race. Yes, um, no, no. It was, it was uh, you know, several years in to the yeah. race, uh, to, to, to doing the officiating. And... Um, I just, I just thought, okay, oh, this is happening in front of me, and oh, what do I do? And then I thought, no, okay, what have I been told? What were we taught? Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is what I need to do. I need to do this, then I need to do this, and then some of the extra things that I ended up doing weren't particularly necessarily told to you, but you figured out that you needed to do them. Mm -hmm. I need to keep the public away from this area, you know, because, yeah. you know, I need the medical people to come in. Uh, so, et cetera. So, um, you just have to stop, not panic, not mm -hmm. uh, not get frightened by it. You just have to think, how am I best going to help this athlete? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when, I mean, often we go through these moments and it may not necessarily in fishing, but all parts of our life, but you, you sort of, after the moment is finished, it's like we sometimes, we either, we can fall apart, we can cry, we can, you know, over sort of analyze it. What was your experience of after going through that experience? Yes. Very good question, Michael. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, yes, it, it, uh, unfortunately, that this particular athlete didn't have a very good outcome, um, and it was very devastating. I um, I went through. I had recorded the phone calls that I had done, um, and the radio calls that I had done. So I had I because I was videoing. The particular area of the course at the time so that kept running so I could actually reflect back on what I'd done and because I thought to myself oh maybe I didn't do the right thing maybe I could have done something quicker or sooner um, but then I realized that actually I hadn't I had done everything exactly as I could have this person could not have been cared for in a better place at any other time if they were going out on a training run uh, um, themselves, they would have been in a worse situation than they yeah. were at this particular time. So, um, so it did get quite emotional, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but then you have to think, well, no, I did everything right. Uh, I've done the the best I could for that person. Yeah. yeah, and certainly someone had obviously confidence in you to put you in that role in the first place. Yes, they did, uh, and I had several comments afterwards about the fact that I had reacted correctly um, and that they didn't think that um, others may have done the same thing at yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah, and certainly, I mean, certainly new officials sometimes feel like, oh, you know, what if I, what if I do the wrong thing here? And, you know, I mean, that was more of a life and death situation, but yes, you probably wouldn't have necessarily influenced the, the final outcome. Um, but what can you say for those officials that go, oh, I'm just, I'm scared to make a decision because what if I make the wrong decision or what if I do the wrong thing in this situation? I would say back to your in instincts as yeah. in you're the, your primary care is to the person or the athlete or the the bystander or whoever it is in a, situ a medical situation like that. Um, and there are many people you can draw from to to come and help you or assist you or advise you. So yeah. it, it you know there are plenty around to to help you. No, I I don't think anyone would have any issue if you are making the best decision for someone's welfare. Yeah, oh, yeah. too true. So yeah, no, thank you. And I think that that really is something really important that to people realise they're never on their own. No. There is always those resources you can sort of tap into in those moments. Yeah. I mean, sort of going forward now, we might sort of get to happier times. <laughs> um, you obviously, that, you've obviously travelled a fair bit, certainly with the sport. But you, what, can you tell me about like the first time you decided to sort of you know, perhaps you know go overseas to to an event and what your experience was like that time? Sure. Yeah, the very first time I uh, I had been to several events uh, in uh, in New Zealand and um, had been advised to progress my um, technical official career. If I was to do so, you'd be advised to go to an overseas event. So uh, we had had a, um, a world championships in, in Auckland. And so a lot of international officials had come across to New Zealand and I met several of them. And one of them was saying, oh, you've got to come over to our country and do one of our events. And so anyway, uh, I took them up on that idea and uh, I um, put my name down and went overseas to do the very first one. I was very nervous about it. Yeah. Because um, I, uh, I went over by myself, stayed, you know, organised own, my own accommodation to be near the event area. Um, uh, and thought, oh, you know, the ones I have met, at least I know one or two yeah. people that are going to be there um, if I don't know them all. And and um, soon soon realised they're all the same as us. Yeah. They're okay. All officials are the same as us. We've got the same um, interests. We've got the same um, mindsets. And so um, meeting all these new officials, they all just took you in like you're part of the family and made you very welcome. Um, it was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't as scary as people often make it out to be. I mean, you probably were a little fairly nervous going into it. Yeah. Where, where was that first event you went to? I went to San Diego. 
Okay. Uh, there was a uh, World Triathlon Series in San Diego, yeah. and uh, and you will be aware of the, probably the uh, the the very um, lively um, oh, yes. technical official from San Diego that uh, has convinced me to come over. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, no. uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, and it was great. I had a great time. I'd never been to San Diego before. Um, just thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah, and and that that official gave me all the tips and tricks on how to get there, where to stay, um, gave me all the information about transport. It was it was really good. Yeah, and that's I think something important that you know there is that sort of resource out there, um, and certainly now I think what officials have is you know we often bring the officials together a little bit more yes. when they when they travel events. So even if you are from you know, you're the only person from that country, there may be like a team hotel or those sort yeah. of events organised around it, which do certainly support you. Yeah, and the good thing about it too is um, generally at um, those events, and like we do in Australia and New Zealand, is there's a, there's a social aspect to it. So yeah. there's some, some social gatherings okay. afterwards and you get to know people a bit better, which is really, really cool. Yeah, because yeah. I know some people don't necessarily take the social side, but obviously I think there's a lot of value there. What have you got out of that social side of, the, of, you know, of being an official around oh. the sport? I've got friends all over the world, yeah. um, and and it's just marvellous um, because um, you know extending your your friendship. So, you know, you can go on a holiday to somewhere overseas, and it's nice to go for a holiday, but it's nice to have a purpose to go as well. So uh -huh. generally, what I will do is I'll um, target an event that uh, of a place that I want to go and see and do some other holiday things around the event. Uh -huh. So um, and sometimes uh, my husband will come with me and, and we'll just do our, our own thing outside of the event. But yep. but getting to know all those people around the world um, over the years, they're, they're great friends um, and uh, I just love that extension. It's just another family. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it certainly is. Yes, yeah, one certainly big family. So with, with triathlon, whereabouts, have you found the skills you've developed in triathlon? Have they helped you in other areas of your life? That you know, yes. Yeah. And, ha and how's, that, how's, how's that come about? Yeah, I, I think they go hand in hand, to be honest with you. Um, mm -hmm. I... Um, I find through my my work, um, my paid work. Yep. Your, <laughs> um, real, your, real, your real job. My real job, the one that yep. pays me money, um, that they complement each other. So okay. I, I, I have found uh, times I don't like public speaking, for example. Um, with triathlon, when you're a technical delegate, um, you have to – to speak publicly to large amounts of people um, and uh, so that has helped me in my work life because work I have to do some public speaking as well well not not as much not to as many people um, but that has helped me so both sides uh, have complemented there but also I have worked where I've been the manager of teams of people um, so it's it's understanding things from their side of things and how they might see stuff, um, and and so knowing that you know someone's new, they're going to be a bit nervous about what they first do. Making sure that they are comfortable and know what they're doing, they know that they can ask, go over the role that they have, so they feel comfortable and and and, and so they're better placed. Same thing in work, you know, it's a, it's the same deal. So there's a lot of crossovers I've found. Um, and in actual fact, my current role that I have, I got this role. Um, uh, one of the, my, they didn't want any of my previous employers to be the um, the referees. They wanted uh, someone from Triathlon New Zealand to be the referee. So, oh wow! Again, I was fortunate enough to uh, to to be able to ask one of the people there who was in charge of the technical program, mm -hmm. and um, and they were my referee for this. They got me into this company that I'm working with now. Yeah. Wow, first time I've heard that one. So that's yeah, that's mm. sort of that's fantastic. Sort of know how that goes. Yeah. If you were to give advice to someone, I'm going over to I'm going over to a new event. I really don't know maybe How can I have a good experience, and how can I sort of you know make myself part of the team? Again, I'd just be talking to the the other team members. Oh, you're you're chief this, or you're 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 working in the transition area, or whatever you are. I'd be talking to each other, um, and talking to the TD, making sure that the technical delegate knows, you, you know, what what you are going to be doing. So I would, 
I, I make it a, a, a plan to, at any event, to make sure that I talk to the technical delegate and say, my understanding is you would like me to do this, this, and this, and that's what I'm going to be doing. Is there anything extra above that that I should be looking out for? Um, so, and talking to the other team members, because quite often your role um, relies on you working with other members of the technical team doing their roles. Yep. So, yeah, definitely um, working, you know, as team members, as I say. Also, it's really good if you've got people who will put their hand up to do that extra. Yep. You know, how many times have we been doing the putting Velcro dots on Cutting the back? Up Velcro of, dots on. <laughs> on the back of name plates and, and um, making up signs and, um, you know, all those extra things. There are people that you know will do that extra. They'll they'll come and paint the numbers on the pontoon with you. They'll, yeah. um, you know. Yeah. That, so what, I mean, so if you have someone in your team that does that, what impression does it leave with you? Oh, I think they, they are a doer. Uh, I'm interested in doers. And, yep. um, you know, anyone who does those sorts of things, puts their hands up, asks, you know, if you need a hand for this or they need a hand for that, not just comes and does their thing and runs away. Mm -hmm. um, that That's a true team player. And the other people that I'll go, oh, okay, and if they're at another event that, that I'm at or if I'm a TD at an event and they come along, I'm going to give them a better role. Yep. Generally speaking, yeah. Yeah. And over your time of obviously, you know, working with people in that manner, um, what's been your approach of developing new officials? Um, so, like to make sure that people um, do a good variety of roles, not just stick to the same roles. That mm -hmm. is that is really important. Um, so, for, how do you, how do you know that? You know, how do you know what they've so, done? So in in New Zealand, we we will ask them. We mm -hmm. we, we have a, a we do we do ask people in Australia as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so um, for example, we've got some that are I um, you know that I uh, I know are coming through the ranks who who have indicated that they'd like to go further in the technical mm -hmm. program. So there's a, there's a few in that space. So for them, I will um, have a chat to them and say, hey, well for this, do you want to do this sort of role or that one what do you think um, mm -hmm. I, I do ask for their opinion because I'd like to put them in a role that they uh, will challenge them or will m help them grow and learn mm -hmm. um, and it's really important that they get that opportunity uh, you know, people going into the same role every single t event is mm -hmm. not good not yeah. good for anyone and, and even within Australia I know quite a few of the Australian officials and I will make sure that they have a different role yeah. Events. That, yeah, I mean, we sort of all, all you know, in this Oceania region, we actually know each other pretty well, and and sort yes. of work, work certainly work together on that basis. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, for obviously, it's sometimes it is, can be quite daunting, and I think it's good to, for people to know that yeah, there are those opportunities, and people will will look after you. Yes. I'm sure there's been you know, you've you've been looked after, as you say, at events um, overseas on several occasions. Yes, I think um, quite often people don't um, don't realise that they actually could say to the technical delegate, "Look, um, I would really like to have some experience in this area or mm -hmm. an, another area." Uh, they just think they just have to. The, they they shouldn't ask sometimes. They just take whatever they're given, yeah, yeah and be happy. Yeah, yeah, and 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 sometimes look, people don't mind, which is great. Yeah. But sometimes they really want to they want to learn more about registration. They want to learn more about the swim or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, so if you know that as a as a technical delegate, it's great because then you know right, I'm going to try and give them that opportunity. It's not always possible, uh, but you certainly can try. Um, yeah. As much as you when can. you say it's not sort of possible, what, what causes it not to be possible in those moments? Sometimes it's not possible because because of a particular role, you may need to have more experienced people to do it in a certain circumstance. You know, for example, if you've got um, a swim course that's really challenging, you've got to change boys all the time, that you've got to keep remeasuring, it's quite complicated, versus 
a lily pond of a flat yeah. lake that's not going to move much and you know so um there's that same with the bike you know if the bike is really complicated i, I would you know um i wouldn't give a chief role to somebody who who hasn't had that opportunity before if it's going to be really challenging really mm -hmm. hard but i'd definitely give them an assistant role so that they could learn from the 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 uh the more experienced person yeah. um and 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 you know so sometimes it calls for we have to go with somebody who's more experienced but sometimes there is opportunities for someone yeah. who's new at it and yeah. also it doesn't also mean that you know all Always the most experienced person gets the role. No, no, no. I've uh, been assist, assistant. I, I love doing mount dismount. I yeah. love it. You know, so, you know, yeah. I think that's what people forget. You know, people have been around the sport for a while and think, oh, all we want to do is all the big chief roles, whatever. Ah, but it's actually yeah. nice not to. And it's also nice to see people come through. Yes, it is. Yeah. And also, um, you know, here in New Zealand, I'm sure you do it in Australia, you know, have have a more experienced person in the transition team, but they they aren't the chief. So it gives somebody else that opportunity and they can cut, they know they can come and ask if they uh, need yeah. advice. Yeah. 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 What would you say, you know, and up to our officials, the qualities that make, you know, a good official? Because not everyone comes with this wealth of experience or can ask, but what, you know, what sort of things do you think makes a good official? Because you see them come through all the time. Some people leave the program. Some yes. people stay with and actually, you know, become really good officials. Is there yes. thing, sort of common threads you've seen? I think um, good communicators, people who are not afraid to ask questions. It's great when people ask questions because they're curious and they want to know more. Um, uh, people who are looking out and thinking, oh, thinking, it's thinking. You know, yeah. they are looking, they're thinking, oh, I'm not too sure about that. I'm going to ask, or should I be doing this, or you know, that sort of thing. It, it, so curiosity is good, mm -hmm. um, and and people who can see an obvious that needs to happen. You know, something yep. that is obvious, and and not go, oh, oh, by the way, I need to, you know, uh, yep. I may, need to tell you about this, but you know. You've let ten people go over the mount line, and yeah. you know <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah. I mean, yes, we'll make, we all sort of make mistakes at different times, and certainly yes. as you develop. Um, um, was it was a particular sort of any sort of um, times you can recall that you you know you made a mistake and ooh, yes, and, but you learnt from it, I suppose. You know. Ah, uh, yes, yes, I did. This is early on, but I remember distinctively remember this. Um, uh, I uh, was uh, given the task of being in penalty box and it was the first time I was in the penalty box and the TD at the time said, right, the penalties are going to, is going to be blah de blah for this race. I mean, are you sure that that's, yes, it's definitely this, you know, so, oh, okay, because I didn't think it was that, but oh, all right. It was a sprint race yeah. um, and they had... Um, they had it was supposed to be fifteen seconds or at the time yep. this is a wee while ago uh, it was a fifteen second penalty for what it should have been, but they had said it was one minute, so I was giving them one minute because I had asked twice, and they yeah. said that it was, and so I was giving them one minute, and then the referee came along and said, "No, it's fifteen seconds yeah. <laughs> uh, so it was like, okay, so next time I'll know to double check with the race referee, so I make up a, a point to double check that and I look at my rules and I go and I will say to them next time if they say anything that's different from what the rules say I will be saying this is what uh, I've got here so yeah it always pays to check it uh, too because I've seen in the past people just assume it's it's a particular length of time because mm -hmm. um, it might have been last year and they haven't realized there's a change so it's always pays to check before every race yeah yeah how do you, I mean, getting ready for events, it's often um, people are unaware of like the work that goes in obviously behind events, certainly as a TD, but sort of just getting mentally ready for event. What do you do to sort of be, you know, ready in whatever role you happen to sort of be taking on? Okay, so I, whatever role I've been given, I will make sure that I have the uh, the the checklist for that particular role uh, even if I'm in a, a, a um, assistant role in that area I will uh, take that checklist and make sure that I understand all the items that are on there uh, I know where to get all those items I know what to do with those items when I do get them um, I 
look at the course maps. I make sure I print off the course maps. I also print off the generally either print off or download onto a um, computer a um, the athlete's guide, a yep. person athlete's guide. Um, I make sure I know how to get to the venue, uh, check out where the parking is, where, you know, get your bearings on exactly where uh, it is. I know, I make sure I know where to meet, what what to take, because they all, you'll always be emailed out with a list of what to wear, what to take with you, etc. Mm -hmm. um, I make sure I know what time the meetings are, I make sure I'm there early. Yeah. yeah. So. So no, it's a good yeah, it's a good little. I mean, not every official sort of thinks about it. They think oh, I just have to turn up. Yeah, yeah. And and away I go. And it varies obviously on the nature of the event, be it from yeah. an you know a local age group race to you know an ITU yeah. ITU world well, yeah. championship. But yeah, certainly the principles apply similarly to be prepared. I, I can say, tell you a golden rule that having the having the um, the course maps printed out and with you is gold. Because everywhere you go, somebody will say, well, whereabouts on the course is that? And if you've got the map, you can just look hmm. at it straight away. Because as soon as you're there with any sort of vest on or whatever, people will ask you questions. Yeah. You've got the ask me any question vest on. You have. Yes. <laughs> and although we say, you know, it's an athlete's responsibility to know the course and everything, it doesn't stop them from actually asking those questions. Correct. And we, and we want to be as helpful as we can in those situations. Yeah. Yes. So, with, I mean, obviously in triathlon, you've seen a lot, a lot of different triathlons in different countries around the world. Has there been a sort of a moment in it which you've witnessed yourself, which has sort of, you know, been inspirational in any way? Uh, yes, there there has been, and it's um, and this won't be an uncommon thing to be to be said, but it has been in a para triathlon race. Yeah. Um, they are the most inspiring races I think um, I've witnessed. Um, and I remember in this particular race, the the last athlete uh, was doing her very very best in this race, and she had a uh, a smile from ear to ear. She was just so pleased to be in an event and doing a race and representing her country, and she just she just smiled the whole way round, and it was fantastic. And the crowds were cheering and clapping, and she just loved every minute of it. Didn't matter to her that she was last. Yeah, it was, it was just amazing. And yeah. you know, they have so many challenges uh, that. Uh, other athletes don't have to deal with, and uh, they just they're just so pleased to be there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're not the first person to mention that sort of the, the para triathlon and how that how that sort of inspires people. How do you find working with those working with elite athletes? Because you work with obviously you know with the I call them able bodied, I suppose, and then the para athletes. Is there any differences in working with the two groups? Um. At first, I have to admit that when I first started working with para triathletes, it, it took a little while to get used to it because the natural thought is, oh, they'll need help with everything. Hmm. Um, and then you realize that they're just normal people like everybody else and they'll tell you if they need help. Yep. They're quite independent uh, and they are very proud and um, they, they – so, so you only – physically help them if they ask you to yeah you can offer um, but you wouldn't necessarily go and jump in there whereas you you might do it more for an elite athlete than you would yeah. actually for a paratri because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they're fierce, fiercely independent independent and they um they they know they have um uh, some challenges but uh, they they know how to adapt and, and work with them yeah yeah Oh, too true. So, I mean, we're in a, obviously in a bit of a strange time. You know, people are working out of their houses and, and things and, and certain events have sort of been put on hold. Um, but looking looking forward over the next couple of years, are there certain things you're sort of looking forward to as far as fish outing goes? Uh, yes, well, there's a very obvious, uh, very... Uh, um, important event that I am waiting and looking forward to, and that would be the um, the... 2020 sorry 2021 um tokyo yep. um 
Olympics um, because have been selected for that, and that would be my number one, of course, um, yep. that I'm looking forward to. But I also am looking equally as forward to is um, going to um, back to um, Devonport again and yep. and the um, and other Australian events and and the odd one around the world as well. Yep. Um, so. Uh, be great when we can get back to doing that. I'm um, hoping that at least we can do some Trans Tasman ones, yeah, um, a little earlier than perhaps some of those other ones. And I, I know um, the the team of officials in New Zealand will be supporting um, any Oceania ones that we can do. Yeah, oh, too true. And so obviously, I mean, yeah, very very fortunate as you say to be you know selected to go go to the Olympics. And this is obviously you've been, you went to Rio for the Paris, was that correct? Uh, yes, I, I actually was on the wait list to go to the para um, triathlon at um, Rio and uh, somebody pulled out uh, yep. eight weeks beforehand. And so I got the call and I could not believe it. I, I thought it was uh, a joke. Yeah, um, I bet. Yeah. And so I got to go there and it was just fantastic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely fantastic. And um, I, I would like to round it off by going to the Olympics if, if, if Tokyo goes ahead. That would yeah. be fantastic as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, my fingers are certainly crossed for you and all the people I know that obviously, you know, are, are waiting to go there. So um, I'm sure it'll come about. So thanks, Leah. It's been great sort of chatting with you today and getting a bit of an insight into your officiating experience and, and what you've done. And um, yeah, certainly, you know, wish, wish you all the best for um, the future. Thanks very much.